receive your call now. It has been ringing since. Ah, it's even daddy. Should you have a I'm on my way, sir. I will be there in a moment. Still sitting down. Yeah. Assistant pastor. I beg to disagree with some of your decisions. Which one of them? I want you to handle the miracle service to My dear. I think I understand the night. I've been standing behind you for the past 10 minutes. You didn't even notice me. to take over. Come on. You? Us. Look, woman. Why can't we always see the same thing like husband and wife? Because I don't see what you want me to see. Then open your eyes well. I'm not blind. I don't think so. Listen. If your hands are clean and your heart is right before the Lord, you would pastor this church successfully. I never blessed with my message this morning. No. Because it was your message, not God's message. been quiet since I came back this afternoon. Yeah, Mr. Go and eat your food. I'm not just in the mood. Ah, 
I'll be going back very early tomorrow morning, and I need the money for my project and the association fees. I don't have 50,000 Naira now. You can go and come back. That will be difficult, Daddy. Then there is nothing I can do for now. You have no choice. You must give her the money. Because she's going to school tomorrow with it. I said I don't have money. And I said you are lying. What is wrong with you these days? You are beginning to be very difficult. Yes, I can't understand you either. How can you say you don't have money? This afternoon I told you to give me about 250,000. You said you can only afford 50,000 Naira. Again, your daughter is asking you for money you said you don't have. When do you want to have money? You have really changed in this house. You don't normally make all these outrageous demands. You used to be very understanding. What is wrong? What is happening? Are you not the regional overseer? And am I not the mother in Israel for the entire region? I must appear well all the time. I must have money to do some important shopping for the home. And also to entertain guests. I need money, dear. The congregation don't give as they used to give. And the offerings are no longer coming in. I just can't explain this. I can't explain this. The offering collected was, was just 65,000 Naira. And the amount of the tithe collected was just a little bit above 110,000 Naira. And the congregation is as large as before. Huh, but the people just refuse to give as they used to give. <laughs> Maybe some people in the treasury team are stealing the Lord's money. You think that is possible? Uh, of course, yes. The anointing runs from the head. What do you expect? <laughs> what exactly are you insinuating? What do you mean? <laughs> well, wherever the head turns to, the whole body goes there. <laughs> mm. Mm. You know what? That is one of the most stupid things you have ever said. And who is the most stupid person here? You desire the position by all means. Now you are on the seat. Have you got the money? Pastor? Regional overseer? Have you got what you wanted? <laughs> Uma, please, stop taunting me. Stop taunting me. If your hands are clean and your heart is right before the Lord, you would pastor this church successfully. 
But I doubt if your hands are clean. <laughs> Man of God, this money will get you nowhere. Sir, Pastor, please, please. This is how much I can get for now. As requested, sir, in addition to this 350,000 naira, I have agreed to send into your account a monthly gift of 150,000 naira for a period of one year. Starting from the month I resume in the new church as the pastor. Please, sir. Hmm. Cavalry Pavilion Assembly may not be possible for now. I can't transfer the pastor of that church. It will raise some dust. He is very close to the general overseer and Papa likes him. By the way, why do you insist on being transferred to Abuja? Why not uh, Bini, Enugu or even Kalaba? There is even a church of about 3,500 congregation in Port Harcourt. I can easily remove the pastor for you. By the way, the field there is even greener than the branch you are craving for in Abuja. I know Pastor Godwin Mbele of the Touch Biara's Cathedral mm. in Port Harcourt. Look, let me move you to Port Harcourt. <sighs> A lot of Shell and Chevron senior staff members worship in that cathedral, including some of the executive officers of Parastatus. <sighs> I also learned that uh, some military officers, including two former military administrators, Worship in that church. Let me move you to Port Harcourt. But, sir, why do you want to remove Pastor Emily? He defaulted in his promises. Since he got there, he only did the right thing for just six months and called it quits. I made several calls to him. He simply ignored me. I will remove him. <laughs> That would be good for me. Um, sir, I prefer to be a district pastor in Touch Biara's Cathedral than pastoring a large church in Lagos. Um, it's a deal, sir. No, not so fast. Go ahead, 100,000 naira to this and agree to increase the monthly gift to 250,000 naira. Pastor, but why? Why? <laughs> because it is a church of about 3,500 congregation with two services we are talking about here. Ah, man of God. A large congregation with many senior staff members of two or three oil companies. Ah. Think of the monthly tithe and weekly offerings. Think of occasional programs and numerous gifts and donations from wealthy members. Ah. Deal or no deal. Deal, sir. I'll bring 
bring it tomorrow. Ben, give me about a week or two to fine tune the transfer. Isaiah 53 verse 5 that the Lord Jesus Christ was bruised and wounded for your transgressions the chastisement of your peace was upon him and by his stripes you are healed in the name of Jesus yeah. Yeah. I decree that you are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Kilo Shelley, let your body move. Praise the Lord! Let your body move. Let your body move. Ah, 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 ah,
Ah, tani mo ye. Ejo ba oni mo shide bi kyo shelezi mi. Ejo. Remove these rags from him. Remove the rags. Give him something else to put on. Eh, la muru kelo ko lenge, ne bubu wa masinle. Timo tim manle ni insi, ni oni mato bi odo me fasi me jiba. Ah, eh, we re re bono, we re boku. Ah, eru lomba mi o. Tio bagbe o kudale riba la ni oja. Ah, kozenti bi odi. Oh, hmm. Saturday no dumari. Hello, man. Luto be. Ah, hello, man. Is there luto? We put the aye bi mi mo she di lui. Aye man. Ah, luwa, luwa mo du be. Ah, mo du be. You roti koko mo. Mo koroti. Mo di be mo wale kong ni bako. Mais je ne sais pas si Lisa, the press men are here from the television station. They heard about what happened. They want to talk with you. They are here with their cameras and to see the man as well. A major incident occurred late this afternoon at the Ilefe branch of Pentecost Renewal Center, where a popular madman was miraculously healed by one pastor, David Bobani. A new pastor just transferred into the church. It has been a wonderful incident to behold, as the only neighborhood has been full of joy for the deliverance of this hairstyle wicked madman who has been given him some terrible nightmares around the place. We are what is the, the problem? And incidentally, the television. with us. Send the news. The pastor of Pentecost Renewal Center. Sir, can you tell us the about news. the miraculous incident that occurred in your church just a moment ago? Well, today is our Bible what study. What happened to him? He, he just is a madman, a chronic madman. And as I drove into the church, uh, this man here was coming to the front of the church and he jumped in front of the car trying to create a commotion. And I simply prayed for him and the Lord Jesus Christ healed him. Hmm. Are you aware, sir, that this man has been in this insanity for about seven years and that he's well known in this town and the environs? Well, actually, our neighbors had told me that he had been creating a terror in this area for the past several years. Hmm. And actually, this is the second time that I'm going to see him. The first time I met him was when I just drove into the to Ileife as a newly posted pastor here and um, we have been having services for some time but this is the second time I'm confronting him and we thank God that the Lord Jesus Christ has been able to heal him right now.
that I should put on the television. Hey, it's so. Which channel? Which channel? Can you tell the viewers what your name is again, sir? My name is Pastor David Bobani, the resident pastor Who is that? of Pentecost what is that Central Central Center, Ileife. Sir, can you tell the viewers in fact that David on television who healed the madman? What happened? Why is it? I want to can you go and and watch the news? That I did not heal the madman. That it was the Lord Jesus Christ who is the healer of all sicknesses and diseases. Healed the madman. And we thank God for his healing. And we give the Lord Jesus Christ the glory. Thank you very much, sir. Wow! Um, can I speak in English, please? So you can speak English? Please. There are many things I can't remember right now. I don't know how I got here. I don't know how I got here. I was a student at the university. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I was informed that I'd been a madman for seven years, seven whole years of my life in this town. I don't know if my people are watching me at all, but God has healed me. God has healed me. Oh God. This man of God prayed for me. And God healed me. I don't know. Hello viewers, you have heard it all. By the time we come your way next week, we're going to be giving you another wonderful report of what is happening around you. This is Janet Martins, reporting from KTV. Ah, that's my man. Thank you, Jesus. He did not arrogate the glory to himself. He gave it back to Jesus. Hmm. That's him. That's my man. Hello, Pastor Ruben. You saw the news too? Yes, I saw it. The Lord will definitely use that incident to glorify His holy name in the town and to bring many people to the foot of the cross. Yes, yes. <laughs> For the first time in the history of this church, the Lord used Pastor David 
to bring the name of her church to a national television. Hey, I never knew the news got to you over there in New State. Thank you for calling. God bless you. Avenue for the Lord's name to be glorified through the church. Thank you for calling. Good night. God bless you. Hello, evening, uh, evangelist. Okay, you saw the news too. <laughs> we give all the glory to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for calling. God bless you. Since he left this church about six months ago, nothing spectacular has happened to us here. Instead, I have no peace in my home, and there had been no inspiration among the church workers. Worse still, the tithes and offerings have seriously depreciated. The church members have no inspiration to give towards the work of God. Perhaps when he left for his new base, perhaps his anointing followed him. And what are you staring at? <laughs> I'm staring at a man who is not spiritually capable to deal with ordinary headache. I'm staring at a frustrated and confused man who is not fit to head a local church, let alone a regional headquarters. Woman, watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Hello, Pastor. Did you buy your way to the top or what? <coughs> Audit! Last time you slapped me over and over. You kicked me and pushed me to the wall, and everything ended here in this room. But if you try it again, tomorrow evening, people will watch another news on television. Because I will pull you down, and both of us will suffer for it. And I mean it. That is better. Good boy. You have an emergency call. From where? 
He said he's General Laiomi from Asokoro. You know him? No, no. Bring the phone. Hello, General. Yeah. This is supposed to John Tommy Singh, the General Overseer of Pentecost Renewal Center International. Yes, I know I'm awesome. My name is uh, General, uh, retired General Laiomi. Someone just gave me your phone number now. And uh, we saw a broadcast about an hour ago about an incident that happened in Ileife. Uh, is that uh, one of your branches? Yes, officer. That is our Ileife branch. And that pastor is my resident pastor of the church. Hope there is no problem, officer. Uh, no, no. There is no problem, uh, apostle. That, uh, that uh, boy that was healed of uh, insanity uh, happened to be one of uh, my siblings and uh, in fact he's the baby the baby of the house Jesus Christ <sighs> yes sir. Uh, Apostle is there any way you can talk to your man if he can come to Abuja tomorrow with the boy and uh, I will be responsible for all the expenses sir Jesus Christ! Tomorrow? Yes, uh, tomorrow. We never, we never thought uh, God could do it. We never knew He could do it at all because we had tried all we could before He took to the streets about eight years ago. But by the time we discovered Him uh, three years ago, we had uh, completely lost hope uh, on Him. But uh, we thank God. Uh, for what happened this evening because we never thought he could be healed and that is why I want uh, the the pastor to bring him to Abuja so that we can have a very good reunion all right I will call the pastor right away thank you very much apostle I'm so grateful sir Try and make it. Greetings to mommy, sir. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Dear, the Gio just called. He saw the news too. What did he say? Ah, yes, he saw the news and he said something. He said I should come to Abuja tomorrow as early as possible with our brother. Ah, Abuja, tomorrow? Yes. Yes, he did not say why, he just gave the order. Yes, there are still so many things we have to settle this night. We are not yet through with the prayers. We will open the scriptures to you and tell you more about the Lord Jesus Christ whom you have just received. Because Tomorrow morning, you are coming along with me to Abuja. Abuja? Yes. Who is in Abuja? Our general overseer is in Abuja. Do you know anyone in Abuja or do you have any relative in Abuja? Yes. No. No. The only thing I remember is I was a student at the University of Lagos. I studied. I studied. I was. I was studying. Dad, 
Daddy. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling well. Then go and inform your mommy. It. The children. Then they sitting watching the television. Okay. I'll come and pray with them now. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, can I help you? Are you not Pastor Gideon? The special assistant to the general overseer in charge of admin and personnel. And um, yes, and who are you? We shall get to know that soon. I just have some few questions to ask you. And I need prompt and accurate answers. And uh, who are you to just bump into my room and demand to ask me questions? I mean, I can just don't understand. Ah. 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 Please, please, don't kill me. Please, I will answer all your questions. Please, don't kill me. Please. Because you are directly in charge of pastor's transfer. You have abused your office. And used the position to seriously enrich yourself. Isn't it? Answer the question! Yes! 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 Yes, please! Yes! Yes! Oh. Yes. Oh. 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 Please. You have unjustly removed so many pastors from where they are and replaced them with those that paid you handsomely. You are among those men of God who have painted the altar of God red with greed and blatant covetousness. You receive monthly gifts from more than 25 pastors who are your partners in this gross evil. Isn't that true? Please, uh, 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 my wife. Uh, Answer the question. Yes. 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 Do you know what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11? As the parrot sits on eggs and hatches them not, so is he that gets riches and not by right. He shall live then in the midst of his days. And at his end, he shall be like a fool. Do you believe the word of God is true? <laughs> Do you believe the word of God is true? Yes, I believe. I believe. How come you don't have fear for the word of God? Ah, ah, please don't kill me. Don't kill me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, My chest. My chest. You have shot me in the chest. Ah, Richard. Oh. Yes, Richard. Yes, Richard. Ah, ah. The man shot my wife too. Ah, Jesus Christ. What's happening? What happened? I woke up and went to the toilet. What happened? The man shot you. Oh, I shot me. In the chest. Calm down, Mr. G. Yes, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Your Bible. Get me my Bible. Your Bible. Fast. Get me my Bible. Oh my God. Oh my God, my chest.
it? Accost children. Who? Among my pastors. Ah. As I went through the book of Second Peter chapter 2, and I came to verse 14, I came across a line that sprang out of the page and hit my spirit. Read for me, please. Having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls, they have a heart trained in covetous practices, and are accursed children. The Spirit of the Lord was telling me that some of my pastors have their eyes full of adultery, hmm. enticing unstable souls. They have their hearts trained in covetous practices. Huh. The Spirit of the Lord says they are accursed children. Accursed children of God? <sighs> they are forsaking the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Boah, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Hmm, that is verse 15. And the Lord says in verse 17, For whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Huh? Is that not horrible? Verse 21 says, For it has been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. <sighs> this unbroken word of God has passed a verdict upon them in verse 3. <sighs> By covetousness, they were exploited with deceptive words. Hmm. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. I feel sorry for many of my pastors mm. who are wallowing in the pool of unrighteous gains. Mm. They still tight and offering collections. Mm. <laughs> they falsify records. Mm. They tell lies to their church members. Mm. They still fear into people's hearts and twist their hand to make them part with the money of their sweat. They are serving the Lord without the consciousness of heaven. Hmm. Hmm. Their judgment has not been idle, hmm. and their destruction does not slumber. The man shot me in the chest. And he shot you too. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Mercy. Mercy, oh Lord. 
Huh. We shall not die. We shall live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Ha. Mercy. Mercy, O oh Lord. Ah. Dear, pray for me. Dear, pray for me. Dear, pray for me. This pain, this pain is too much. Paul, you said the man shot me too. Yes, the man shot you. And the jet is in Jesus' name. Dear, get daddy. Get daddy to come and pray for me. Finish daddy. Daddy, you, I need him to come and pray for me, please. Oh, Lord. My chest. Shot him in the chest. And that person shot me too. Oh, he's alright, he's alright, it's okay. He's going to be alright. I mean, yeah. take, take us to him, please. Let's, let's, let's see him. Can you please pray for me? I need the mercy of God that I need your prayers. Please pray for me. Pray for me. This pain is too much. Oh my God. Pray for me, Daddy. Please pray. Pastor Peter. Yes, Daddy. Talk to me. What happened? Someone shot me in the dream. He shot my wife too. My wife died in the dream. Oh my God. I <laughs> reject it in Jesus' name. I reject that. <laughs> Daddy, I woke up. I had this terrible pains in my chest. <laughs> Please let him pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I don't want to die. <laughs> Oh, please pray for me. That's okay, that's okay. Let's pray. Uh, uh, uh. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me please pray for me. Ah. Pastor Gideon. Yes, Daddy. Was that all you saw in the dream? Uh, ah. Are there some things you need to say before I pray for you? Ah, Daddy. Ah. I need the mercy of God. I need your prayers, please, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, please pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me, please, Daddy. Pray. My chest. 
I get that dream in Jesus' name. No, if you fashion against us, shall prosper. Daddy, please pray for us. joy for you to die. But I cannot do against the will of my father. You need to speak out or you will die. Ah, please. And your wife is already carrying the same cause. She will die. I don't want to die. Let me please pray. Merci. Please pray for us. Merci, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Pray for us. The man shot and killed my wife. <laughs> and he gave me a Bible verse, Jeremiah 17 11. Before shooting me in the chest. <laughs> and I woke up. Oh. God, please pray for me. What Bible verse is that? Jeremiah 17, 11, sir. What does that say? As the partridge seated on eggs oh. and hashed them not, so he that get a riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days. And at his end, shall be a fool. Ah. Oh my God. Pastor Gideon. <laughs> there is something in your life that Lord wants you to speak out. Do you wish to die in the midst of your days? Ah, oh, no! I don't want to die. I need the mercy of God. Oh, please. <laughs> please pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me, Daddy. Then speak out. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Daddy. Let me like What could I call this all this now? Let me like What did the doctor say? The doctor said I need to get some money for other important tests. He has not been able to actually diagnose what the problem is. Uh, what about the blood test he conducted? What did the result say? He said the preliminary result shows some blood related diseases. Ah, uh, blood related diseases. <laughs> blood related diseases. He said that. He said I have to get oh provision for 60,000 naira to do some other tests, oh. drugs and x-rays. Oh. <laughs> and what are we going to do now? Okay. I have to go home and get my checkbook. Then I will go to the bank and get the money. Jesus Christ. I will back.
They can grind you. Mommy, tell me. Good morning. You look worried. Good morning, Pastor. Sorry for coming to you early this morning. I couldn't go to office this morning because of a very serious issue. Uh, Pastor, we need to see you. Uh, but as you can see, I have an issue at hand. So please, can that matter wait till evening? No, Pastor. No. It can't wait. This is a very serious issue. And we have to set it now. And what is it? Tell the pastor what you told us at home yesterday night. It was... It was Benga, sir. Benga? Which Benga? Your Benga, pastor. Your son in the university. And what did he do? My daughter is three months pregnant. That is what your son has done. Benga. Did what? He even advised her to follow him to a local clinic for an abortion. But my daughter declined absolutely. My son? Impregnated your daughter? Please, Pastor, can you call him out for us? He should be able to confirm this himself. He hasn't been home since two months ago. He's busy in school. No, sir. No, sir. We we met yesterday, sir. Huh. He hasn't come home. Oh my god. I can't believe this. So, yeah. what are we going to do now? Pastor, if your son in the university. Is seeking for, for whose life to destroy? Should it be my daughter? Who is just preparing for our egg? Ah, Pastor. It shouldn't be my daughter. Please, Pastor. Can you call the boy to come home to come and answer to this allegation? It is very important he should come home and set what is on guard. Hello? Hello? Have you got the money? No! I am still at home! What is it? The doctor just came up with something else now. Oh my god! What happened? He said her breathing is not smooth. She, she's not breathing well. Uh, please come now. You want to see your daddy? Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. All right. Ah, eh, uh, eh, uh, the commander. Please, uh, let the matter wait till evening. Please, I will call him. We tried to call your son. He did not pick our calls. Why can't you call him? Is he not your son? Call him and hear things for yourself. It's all right. Mommy came in. Trust me. Uh, I will call him. Oh, please. Let's come back here in the evening to settle this matter, please. Let's go. Pastor, sir, with all due respect, what type of moral or biblical teachings are you giving your children? I admit our daughter is at fault too, but how do we handle this mess? Eh? The pastor's son impregnating the dickens daughter. How? How do we clear this mess before the church, the public, and the press? I will never agree to endanger the life of my daughter in an abortion. And I will never jeopardize my daughter's academic future by allowing her to carry a baby at this stage of her life. Pastor, 
Therefore, by the time we come back in the evening, fix the puzzle. Daddy, <laughs> I have sinned against God in betraying the trust you placed on me. <sighs> Forgive me, Daddy. <laughs> and help me ask the Lord for his forgiveness. Ah, please, Daddy. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me who put you in that position of authority. It was God. And it was seen you have betrayed. Uh. <laughs> As the special assistant to the GO, responsible for approving the transfer of pastors, you turned yourself into an alpha and Who would you like to transfer? And who will wait will return? Mm -hmm. You have enriched yourself by collecting financial and material bribes. I need the mercy of God. Oh my God. You have placed yourself under the payroll of several pastors. And your bank account has been fat. You have unjustly taking away some pastors from their duty post and unfairly placed unmerited pastors over larger congregations they are unfit to handle. All for money. You have thrown some pastors and their families to some remote places and retained them there longer than necessary because they had refused to give bribe. Now you have all the money. You have the cars. You have turned yourself a godfather to many pastors who are supposed to have the Lord God as their only father. Oh. <laughs> I need this mercy, Daddy. I don't want to die. I don't want my wife to die. Oh, please. Uh, yeah. They shot me in the chest. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pastor Gideon. Yes, I will tell you what the Lord told me this morning. <laughs> About you and others like you. He said, you are forsaking the right way. And gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Boa, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And as many of you as have refused to repent, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Oh, yeah. I repent, Daddy. <laughs> I repent, please. 
<laughs> reverse this course from over my head. Let my wife and I leave. <laughs> Oh, please pray for us. Pray for us. <laughs> I will pray for you as you requested. Oh, thank you. I will make supplication unto the Lord God for you and your family. I forgive you. But I pray you receive mercy from the Lord. Please, <laughs> ah, ah, Nurse! Please, Nurse! Uh, my wife and my daughter, they are in this room. Yes, come with me. Your wife is here. She was given sedative to allow her to have some rest. Ah, and my daughter, where is she? Come to the doctor. God bless you, man. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Uh, Daddy, I'm so pleased to be here this evening, sir. Uh, good evening, mommy. Good evening. Bless you. Man. You have done us proud. Yes. You have done the church of God proud. Yes. Very beautiful. Uh, we just thank God for your life, Pastor David. You see, the Lord has used you to confirm the Lordship of Jesus Christ to many people. Through that testimony of the miracle, I mean, it's a great thing. Thank God for your life. Thank God. And more importantly, the Lord used that incident to confirm to me a particular and important issue. Hmm. Where is the man? He's in the car, sir. Ah. Let me go and bring him. Oh, that would be okay. Very okay. All right, sir. Okay, Pastor. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. This is my chill. Apostle. Oh. You are the one I spoke with on the phone. Exactly. Oh. Well, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Huh? Thank you, Apostle. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Apostle. 
Having got to the top by all group means, having my ways to the top position in this pastoral ministry, I have no anointing and heavenly backings to sustain it, because the Lord didn't put me there. So I lost my peace, I lost my spiritual strength. I lost my integrity. I lost the life of my daughter. And most importantly, I lost the favor of God. If I continue to hold on to this unmerited position, can I still make heaven? Oh, take away this cause, Lord. And may I once again have joy in thy presence. So many evil things are happening in this church. The type of corruptions that are rampant in the world. Various political moves are found among many pastors of this church. That if Christ Jesus will come now, many will miss the glorious rapture. Mm. I witnessed some astonishing occurrences these past few days and it made me to renew my commitment to hand over the church into the Lord's hands. Many pastors were bribing their ways up to the post of district coordinators and regional overseer of the church. Many are giving large sum of money to my special assistant in charge of pastor's transfer to effect their posting to large churches and big cities. Many are adopting various unhandled methods to extort money from their church members. They falsify our friend and title records. They tell lies to their church members and to the church authority.
they seek to hide their evils from the general overseer. But a fool is to know that the all seen God is the owner of the church, yes. and the general overseer is just a servant like themselves. So that is the essence of the Bible passage we have just read in 2 Peter chapter 2, the entire verses. I am particularly captivated by the third verse of the chapter, which says, by covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. And the 14th verse was where my heart was grieved. When the Bible calls such ministers of God accursed children, we have relevant cases of such on our hands presently. Pastor Joshua Enola has just tendered his letter of resignation. As the regional overseer in charge of the Western region, he has assented to be retained as an ordinary pastor, ready to be transferred anywhere to serve the Lord. Pastor Gideon Abraham has been relieved of his post as my special assistant in charge of administration and personnel. We are all aware of the glorious thing the Lord did through Pastor David Bobani at Ilefe. Yes. It was a moment of great joy for me, seeing the news on the television. And that very day, I got the major sign the Lord said he would give me. Pastor Mavia, could you please bring in Pastor David from the waiting room? He was supposed to be in this meeting, but because he was wrongly demoted from the post of regional overseer and transferred to a local church, <laughs> another pastor bought up his post. However, it all worked out for good. And since the death of our former deputy general overseer two years ago, I have waited on the Lord for a replacement. And the very day of the broadcast, I saw the sign the Lord said he would give me. The Lord. By the authority confided on me, as the general overseer of Pentecost Renewal Center International Nigeria, I hereby announce Pastor David Gobaniji as the new Deputy General Overseer.
Yes, come in. Joshua, ah. Pastor Joshua, how are you? How are you? Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. Mm -hmm. How are you? Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Ah. Sit down. You're welcome. It's nice to have you here. Hmm? Nice to see you. Well, it is well. It is well. I am very glad you accepted to allow me to come and see you, sir. I have come to ask for your forgiveness, sir. Pastor Joshua. I, I, I thought we spoke on phone. I told you I've already forgiven you from my heart. I didn't know you would come all the way to Abuja to come and see me. Pastor. I have no choice in the matter. I have already forgiven you. I took it upon myself to come. It is part of my restitution, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. You're welcome. How is your wife? She's trying to come over all our losses, including the loss of our daughter. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. It is well. Hmm? It is well, it is well. But I hope you are staying till tomorrow so that at least we can go home together. I would have loved to. I have an appointment with Pastor Kingsley. Mm. I am collecting my letter of transfer. Ah, transfer? To where? I don't know yet, sir. I'm very grateful, sir. My brother, it is well. The Lord go with you. It is well. You are welcome, sir. Yes. Let's go. How was the journey? Not bad. You are welcome, sir. Yes. I am Pastor Adekola, the resident pastor of Pentecost Renewal Center, Shagam. You are Pastor Joshua Niola from Lagos. Yes. yes. Huh. I have been informed about your coming. Uh, you are welcome to our humble church. Uh, by His grace, you will enjoy assisting me in pastoring here. Uh, let me take you around the church. Oh, it's all right, sir. Ah, uh, hold on, please.
I am a lord. Lord, use me. 